In this video for Dementia Training Australia, I will discuss the personal effect of dementia on me. In 2008, neurologists diagnosed me with what is now referred to as primary progressive aphasia. For about six weeks, the wife, the mother, the grief counsellor, the employee, the student and the retired nurse cried almost every day. But rather than join the more than 40% of people with dementia who become clinically depressed, I began writing about my fears and my joys, primarily as a way to capture my memories, but to gain control over my life again. Having been told there was no treatment, nothing my doctors or I could do, and then only advised to get my end of life affairs in order, to give up work and to give up my tertiary studies, it would have been easier perhaps to accept depression and give up. But I soon trademarked this disabling advice and in spite of the rhetoric, little was changing and almost all people being diagnosed with dementia then were being prescribed disengagement. I have an abundance of anthropological evidence from my global contacts and from within the Dementia Alliance International Membership, which now represents people with dementia in 49 countries, that this is still the case. While the diagnosing doctors may tell us there is nothing we or they can do, or that what they may be able to prescribe in, form, in the form of a drug may or may not help, their job is mostly to diagnose and then monitor our progression. However, we should be referred to post-diagnostic services that provide us with support to live, not die, as independently and positively as, po as possible. Instead, doctors and service providers to continue to promote giving up on life and ignore the possibility of living positively with dementia with proactive disability support, including rehabilitation. For example, in a fundraising ride around Australia in 2017, the late Greg Kelly, who was diagnosed with dementia at 59, said in an interview on Wynn News in Queensland, the specialist just simply said, go away and get your end of life affairs in order. What is missing is there is only support to die from dementia, not to live with it. If I'd had a stroke or other brain injury, I'd have been provided with rehabilitation and if required, disability assessment and proactive disability support, including being supported to go back to work. This means that buildings and environments, not just people, need to be dementia enabling. We have wheelchair ramps, hearing loops and many other types of disability supports. And in fact, organisations would be fined if they were not provided. What people with dementia need are cognitive ramps, including, including support to communicate and dementia enabling building designs so that we can navigate our communities and can access our buildings. I sometimes cannot read signs, can't find my way, function or function due to loud noises or music in shopping centres um, and find crowds difficult, but I need building to support my disabilities. We have come a long way in our understanding of the need to adapt environments for people with physical disabilities. For example, curb cuts are common, automatic door openers are becoming more frequent, taller toilets and grab bars are no longer rarities. Physical disability is something that we understand needs adaptation. Yet for those who work with people with cognitive disabilities due to dementia, the idea of accessibility is still fairly new. Accessible communication is a new and helpful way of reframing the need to adapt our language and our process of communication for people with cognitive disabilities. It's also one aspect of cognitive ramping. Dementia enabling building designs are also crucial to supporting independence and ensuring our human rights are being met. For example, if we saw someone pushing a wheelchair into a set of stairs and then being angry at the wheelchair user for the fact that the wheelchair isn't made to climb stairs, we'd be shocked, yet it isn't uncommon to see someone completely frustrated and angry at someone with a cognitive disability caused by dementia who gets stuck at a cognitive curb that they just can't get over. If we can't see the a barrier, we assume it isn't there. We begin to treat people with dementia as just being willful and stubborn or non-compliant. In our frustration with these behaviours, we can lose our sense of logic. Why would someone who is otherwise a happy-go-lucky person choose an issue or two just to make you upset? Do you really believe that people you serve are up at night plotting to ruin your day. What is currently happening in society and communities and environments do not support our right to freedom. 
it's time that they did and I hope this video helps you understand why.